Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a Budget. Today we have an episode of Quest for Quarters. On episodes like these, I take you through underrated budget cards that you should be considering when you're building your decks. For these episodes, not only does every card have to be under $1, but they also need to be used less than 4% of eligible decks on EDH Rack. This show and episodes like this one are possible because of viewers like you. So if you're looking for some easy ways to help support the show, make sure you like this episode and share it with friends. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Thank you to everyone who's already purchased our merchandise, it really does help support the channel. Another easy way to support this channel is by using our TCG Player affiliate links. So make sure that you're looking for those links in the description whenever you're buying a deck or just individual cards. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support. Today's first underrated Quest Recorders card is Kismet. Currently it's only 65 cents and sees play in just 1,400 decks. It's an enchantment for 3 and a white and it says, Artifacts, creatures, and lands your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. This effect can be very powerful and can be very underrated in magic. Essentially with this in play you're setting all of your opponents back while not affecting yourself at all. Artifacts entering the battlefield tap means that their mana rocks won't be able to tap for mana right away. And any activated abilities they have on artifacts can't be activated right away either. If a creature has haste, that's completely negated by this as well. And their creatures won't be able to block right away either. But the biggest part of this has got to be lands coming to play tapped. Essentially, you're setting everyone's back a turn as soon as this comes down. Because when they play their next land, they're still going to have access to the exact same number of lands that they had on the turn before. The difference between land coming into play tapped and untapped is huge. If your opponent's going to play a very expensive dual land like Underground Sea, now it's essentially a submerged boneyard. Again, this kind of a card can really slow your opponents down and throw a wrench into their plans. And for comparison's sake, let's go look at some similar cards. First up, there's Frozen Aether, which is just over $2 and sees play in 1,600 decks. Essentially, it's the exact same card as Kismet, but in blue. So it does see a little more play than Kismet, but not by much. Again, as I mentioned before, I think this effect is very underrated. Setting your opponent's back is essentially the exact same thing as setting yourself ahead. And I don't think that 4 mana is asking too much for what either Frozen Aether or Kismet do. But there are some enchantments that have a lower converted mana cost that see a lot more play with Blind Obedience and Authority of the Consoles. Blind Obedience is currently $1.74 and sees playing over 13,000 decks. It's an enchantment for 1 in a white and it has Extort. So whenever you cast a spell, you may pay Orzhov, and if you do, each opponent loses 1 life and you gain that much life. And then it says, Artifacts and creatures your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. So unlike Kismet, this won't make your opponent's lands come into play tapped. Now this card is still very powerful. Making your opponent's artifacts and creatures come into play tapped still throws a huge wrench into their plans. And Extort is a very powerful mechanic, especially in Commander. I'm definitely not saying that Kismet needs to see more play than this. It's more efficiently costed, and it can drain your opponents. But Kismet's going to be more effective by actually slowing them down where it hurts the most. Again, in my opinion, making lands come into play tapped can be the most backbreaking out of the three. And then there's Authority of the Consoles, which costs $2.47 and is currently seeing played over 10,000 decks. It's an enchantment for just a white, and it says, Creatures your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, you gain one life. So unlike Kismet, this only affects creatures and not artifacts or lands. Since you can play it on turn 1, this can be extremely effective and can gain you a lot of life throughout the game. But again, it won't slow your opponents down as much as Kismet does. All of these are very effective enchantments. I think people are giving enough respect to cards like Blind Obedience and Authority of the Consoles, but not enough to Frozen Aether or Kismet. Lands coming into play tap makes a huge difference. But now let's take a look at some decks where Kismet can be a good fit. First up, there's a stacks commander like Grand Arbiter Augustine IV. This deck is looking to slow your opponents down to a crawl. Grand Arbiter already taxes your opponents and Kismet makes them even slower. Another deck that might be able to use Kismet is a politics deck like Queen Marchesa. Slowing everyone else down can give you the time to protect yourself and enough time to gain some leverage. But perhaps the best fit for Kismet is a brutal deck like Okori Dust Drinker. It says lands on untapped during their controller's untapped steps and at the beginning of each player's upkeep that player untaps a land they control. The fact that their lands are going to now come into play tap makes it nearly impossible for them to do anything. Again, Kismet is a great card to slow everyone else down and put them behind. It doesn't fit in every single deck, but it fits in a lot more decks than it's in right now. Today's next underrated quest recorders card is Razakest Right. Currently it's just 34 cents and sees play in just 1,900 decks. It's a sorcery for 3 black black and it says search your library for a card and put that card into your hand then shuffle your library. On top of that it's got cycling for a black. So this is an effective tutor that you can actually replace if you need to. For a tutor that only gets you one card, 5 mana is on the higher end of what you actually want to pay. But being able to cycle it away when you don't need it is huge. And only costing 1 mana to cycle is pretty much as good as you're going to get. So if you have an extra mana up right before your turn and you don't need to tutor, you can just cycle this away. There's also plenty of decks out there that benefit you whenever you cycle a card, discard a card, or draw a card. So in that case, it might be even more effective than a tutor that costs slightly less. But for comparison's sake, let's take a look at some similar cards. So the gold standard for tutors in Commander is probably Demonic Tutor. 
There's definitely a reason that it sees play in over 40,000 decks and is nearly $30. It's a tutor that only costs two mana. And to get any card from your deck into your hand for just two mana, you're probably never going to beat that rate. Now, Demonic Tutor might not be able to cycle like Razakast right, but that hardly matters since it costs three less. Again, Demonic Tutor is pretty much the gold standard for tutors for a reason. A card that seems to be a much more fair comparison for us is Diabolic Tutor. Currently, it's just 40 cents and sees play in over 30,000 decks. It's essentially just a tutor for two black black. So even though it does cost two more mana than Demonic Tutor, it still sees a ton of play. This really just shows you the value of tutors in Commander. And in black, 4 mana is probably about the going rate for tutoring for one card. So again, Rascus Right might cost one more, but you can actually cycle it too. Diabolic Tutor may cost one less, but it doesn't give you that option. Now I'd say that for most decks, Diabolic Tutor is going to be better. But there are definitely decks out there where that cycling is very relevant, and Rascus Right would be a better pick. And there are even plenty of decks out there that want more than one tutor, so both might be a good fit. And finally, a 5 mana tutor that we can compare Razakast Right to is Final Parting. I actually highlighted this fantastic card in a previous Quest Recorders episode. It's currently just 30 cents and sees playing over 3,800 decks. It's a sorcery for 3 black black, and it says search your library for 2 cards, put one into your hand and the other into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. So this has the exact same converted mana cost as Razakast Right, and it gets you one card into your hand. But where Razakast Right has cycling, this one gets you another card into your graveyard. Now there are decks that would prefer this effect, and there are other decks that would prefer cycling. I'm just trying to illustrate the point that tutoring for 5 mana is not a bad thing. Razakast Right is is a good tutor because you can ditch it if you need to. But let's take a look at some decks where it might be a really good fit for. First up, there's Karak, Son of Yawgmoth. In this deck, Razakast Right pretty much just costs 3 mana and its cycling is free. It will cost you life on top of that, but life in Commander is abundant. Another deck where this might shine in is Selenia Dark Angel. In a deck like this, you're looking for very specific pieces, but if you have one, you don't necessarily need your tutors. The same thing is true for a deck like my Tasker Villainous Wealth deck. If you have Villainous Wealth, you probably don't need a tutor, and it might be more beneficial to cycle away that card. Again, Razakast Right is not for every deck, and it's not the best tutor out there. But there are plenty of decks out there that could use something like Razakast Right over something like Diabolic Tutor, and Diabolic Tutor seems a ton of play. And now let's move on to our next underrated quest recorders card with Key to the City. Currently it's only 14 cents and sees playing just over 4,000 decks. It's an artifact that costs 2 and it says, tap, discard a card, up to one target creature can't be blocked this turn. And whenever Key to the City becomes untapped, you may pay 2 if you do draw a card. This efficiently cost artifact can help you in a lot of ways. First off, it can make a creature unblockable, which can be a very powerful effect. If you're playing a Voltron deck or just have a bunch of big beaters, this can come in huge. And it doesn't even have to be your creature. You can make a deal with someone else to get their creature through on another opponent. And although you have to discard a card, this does give you the option of replacing that card for 2 mana. And there are plenty of decks out there that would easily pay 2 mana to rummage. Now this is kind of like a delayed rummage, but still can be very effective. Essentially you get to get rid of the worst card in your hand and hope to get something better next turn. There really is no other card that's exactly like Key to the City, but let's take a look at some similar ones. First up there's Rogue's Passage, which sees playing over 44,000 decks. By paying 4 and tapping it, you can make target creature unblockable. Now because this is a land, it's a little easier to include for some decks. But essentially with this, to make a creature unblockable, you're really paying 5 mana since you have to tap this land itself. Whereas essentially Rogue's Passage can be free, or you can pay 2 mana to replace the card that you're discarding. Now Rogue's Passage is still a very good card, and both cards can work great in the same deck. Just know that when both of them are in play, Key to the City can definitely be more efficient. Another card that makes creatures unblockable is Whisper Soul Cloak. Currently it's $1.32 and sees playing over 20,000 decks. It says equipped creature can't be blocked and has Shroud. So on top of making a creature unblockable, it also protects them too. In Voltron decks, Shroud can actually be a downside though too. In a lot of Voltron decks, you want to be able to target your commander. Now again, this is still a great card, and both this and Key to the City can be very effective. But unlike Key to the City, this can't make your opponent's creatures unblockable. So you can't use this politically, and you can't use it to rummage. In a somewhat strange way, Key to the City is actually kind of similar to Monastery Siege. When Monastery Siege comes into play, if you choose cons, at the beginning of your draw step, you draw an initial card, then you discard a card. So essentially, each turn you get to loot for free. Now looting is slightly more effective than rummaging, but still, both are very similar. And again, with Key to the City, you actually have to pay two to essentially rummage. But again, on top of rummaging, you're making a creature unblockable. And also, Monastery Siege is in blue, but Key to the City can fit in any color. Blue is great at card advantage and selection, but colors like red and white aren't. So whereas Monastery Siege isn't an option, Key to the City is. But now let's look at some decks that might be a good fit for this card. A new commander like Anya can be a great fit for this. Essentially giving you another way to freely discard can untap Anya for you. Another commander this can fit in could be Alesha. Not only does it protect her by making her unblockable, but it also puts things into your graveyard to reanimate with her. Similarly, Key to the City is a fantastic fit in Felden. You can discard creatures that Felden can then create tokens of. Again, Key to the City can be effective for a lot of reasons. It's a very cheap and efficient artifact that can do a lot in the right deck. Our final quest recorders card today is Turn Aside. Currently it's only 11 cents and sees playing just over 1000 decks. It's an instant for a blue that says, counter target spell that targets a permanent you control. So for just 1 mana, this can save any of your permanents from targeted removal. This is a very valuable and efficient counter spell in the right deck. If your deck revolves around your commander or a specific permanent in your deck, this could definitely be a good fit for it. This can also be a counter spell that can come out of nowhere. For the most part, if you just have 1 mana up, most people aren't expecting an effective counter spell. Now there aren't too many 1 mana counter spells out there, but there are definitely a few. So let's go through some of them in our similar cards. First up there's Swan Song, which is currently $4.17 
defense and cease playing over 28,000 decks. It's an instant for a blue that says counter target enchantment, instant or sorcery spell as controller creates a 2-2 blue bird creature token with flying. In commander, having to give someone a 2-2 flyer is no big deal. So being able to counter an enchantment, instant or sorcery for just one mana is huge. When it comes to one mana counter spells, this is probably the best. Turn aside isn't as good, but can still be nearly as effective in the right deck. Another one mana counter spell is Spell Pierce. Currently it's just 18 cents and sees play in 6,000 decks. It's an instant for a blue that says counter target non-creature spell unless its controller pays two. So Spell Pierce will be more effective early in the game. Your opponents probably won't have extra mana up then. But unlike Turn Aside, this does not guarantee that it can protect your permanent later in the game. And finally, there's Flusterstorm. With its recent reprint in Modern Horizons, its price is down to $5.83. At this price, I think the number of decks it's going to see play in will definitely go up. Like the other cards, it's also an instant for a blue. It says Counter Target Instant Sorcery Spell unless this controller pays 1, and it has Storm. So the more spells that are cast in that turn, the more effective this can be. This definitely has a wider application than turn aside, but again, there is less guarantee that you can actually protect that permanent you want to protect. That is, at least when you're talking about targeted removal. Now, all these one mana counter spells can be very efficient and very effective, but if your deck just really wants to protect your commander or a key piece, turn aside can be one of your better options. So let's go through some of those potential decks that it could be good in. First up, there's Shu in the Silent Tempest, which is definitely a deck that wants to protect its commander. It's also a deck that revolves around efficiently costed spells, so turn aside fits right in. Next up, there's Zur the Enchanter, which wants to protect Zur as well as the enchantments that it gets. And finally, there's Talran, which is a deck that definitely revolves around its commander, and protecting him while creating a Drake for just one mana is a huge value. Turn aside might not be right for every single deck, but it's definitely an efficient counter spell that can be great in certain ones. And if you haven't seen my last Quest Recorders episode, make sure you check it out here. And with that, our show is coming to a close, but I really want to hear about your thoughts on these picks, so why don't you let me know in the comments below. And make sure that you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Links to our social media accounts can be found in the description. Also in the description below is a link to the Commander's Quarters Patreon page, and I just want to say a quick thank you to the patrons who have subscribed so far. There are many benefits to being a patron for the Commander's Quarters, including being able to vote on future Commanders for deck techs. There's even a general level tier where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. I truly couldn't do this without all of your support, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again, and have a good one. <laughs>